Hi, this is Ruben Lerner, and you are watching my Python Standard Library video explainer series. This time, we are going to look at how you can improve the performance of your regular expressions. So let's say I want to say here, import RE, and let's say I want to find all of the words in the dictionary that have an A followed by a P followed by an E followed by an N in them. All right, so I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say for one line in open words. And we're going to say here, uh, re uh, if, well, let's do this. Yeah, m equals re.search. And we're going to say, I was looking for, what was it? A followed by E followed by P followed by M. All right, so we're going to do this inside of one line. And then if M, then we're going to sort of print M group zero. We can just print one line. I guess it doesn't really matter. One line. Let's do that. And so we found all the different lines that fit that. It's always astonishing to me to see how many words fit just about any sort of thing I can think of. Obviously, one line includes a new line. So I'm going to say here, end equals empty string, and that'll reduce it by a bit. But we still have a fair amount of things. OK, fine. Because who doesn't think of vasopidiodemostomy when they think of a word fitting those? All right. <laughs> Aside from the absurdity of the English language in many ways, what's going on here? I'm opening the file, and I'm iterating over it one line at a time. So far, so good. I'm then saying, OK, I want to find this regular expression in the line. And here, it's not so good. Because when I type a regular expression, it actually is compiled into an internal binary format. This textual format that I use has to be translated, has to be compiled. And so what's happening in re.search is that we are indeed compiling it, but we're compiling it for each and every line in the file. And that can add up over time, especially if your regular expression is kind of complex. So how can we change that? How can we make a regular expression a bit more uh, um, efficient? Well, what we can do is compile it once. I can say here, I can say here like uh, RO, like a, re a regular expression object. I often use this. Why? I don't know. And I can say re.compile A, E, P, M. And so I compile it there. And then what I can do is I can say RO.search. And we don't need the regular expression there anymore because it's already part of the object. And so I'll get exactly the same results back. But the compilation will only take place once. So when should you be using re.compile? I don't think you should use it all the time. But certainly, if you are searching or matching or find all inside of a loop, almost certainly your code will benefit if you compile it outside of the loop and then just apply it. Now, you'll notice that so re.search and ro.search are almost identical. The only difference is, is that first uh, argument there going to be the regular expression text version, you know, textual mode? Or is it going to be the compiled regular expression object? But regardless of what you do, regardless of which way you run it, it's going to give you exactly the same results. So that's one trick that you should definitely, definitely use when you're working with regular expressions, especially if you're searching through a file. I mean, if you're searching through log files, this should be uh, you know, pretty much standard, standard fare for you. A similar but different technique is, let's say I am looking for, let's, let's do this. I'm going to say, oh, let's just open up words. So let's say you know, your words equals open words dot read. Right, so now I've read the entire file into memory. The length of words is, actually, I mean, it's not massive by modern standards. It's about, what, two and a half megabytes there. But you know, it's big-ish. OK, so now what? Well, let's say I want to iterate through, let's say I want to get all the matches, once again, to these words that I've asked for. So I'm going to say here, re.findall of a, e, uh, p, m in words. And I'm going to find a whole lot of them. In fact, it should be the same ones. Notice that find all returns a list. And that's normal, and that's what we would expect from find all. But also, this list might be pretty long. How many matches did we find? We found 111. Well, it could have been more. Right, but 111 is already a reasonable number. Maybe I don't want to get a list back and then have this list in memory just so I can iterate over it. Really, I'd be just as well having an iterator object, and each time I ask for the next word, I will then be able to print it out. Well, guess what? We can use find iter, and find iter returns an iterator object. And so I can now say for one match in re find iter, print one match. Now again, oh sorry, one match dot group zero, right? And then we'll get the words. 
Now, why is this better? It's better because at no point in time are we consuming memory for all of our matches. The maximum amount of memory we are consuming is for the current match, the current word that we found in there. And so uh, I tend to use find all all the time when I'm interactively working on and debugging regular expressions. Um, but if I'm if I know I'm going to be getting a very large number and I still want to use find all, then find iter is a great way to go. So these are two different techniques you can use for improving the efficiency of your regular expressions. That's it for this time. Come back soon to the Python Standard Library Video Explainer Series. And if you have comments, suggestions, thoughts, just let me know. You can let me know by email, Reuven at Learner C-O-I-L. You can let me know on Twitter at Reuven M. Learner. Or you can just shout outside your window. And if I live close to you, I will hear that. All right, that was ridiculous, but I will see you next time.